Glad you could make it. I have a mission for you. We need you to infiltrate the Shadow Council stronghold in the Shadow Labyrinth and find out what they're planning for Terracar. We can't have any witnesses, and it's vital that you stay hidden. Can we count on you? Yes. Not a sound. Yar! Ah! This is an outlaw rogue. And this is how you level an outlaw rogue. Outlaw rogues are the closest thing you can get to playing a pirate in World of Warcraft. They're agile, they want to fight all the time, and they're just the best. They like to jump into the middle of the fight and swing the weapons around and just kill everyone in the room. They don't really do the whole subtlety thing that well. And they're the newest specialization in the game, sort of. Outlaw is a revamp specialization new to Legion, just like Survival Hunters. And it's based off the old combat specialization, which did mostly the same thing. If you're returning to the game, you don't really have to relearn how to play everything. A lot of abilities were carried over and still do the same thing, and some of them just got renamed and touched up in the process. Outlaw adds pirate flavor to combat's old and kind of bland... Aesthetic. It still plays how combat used to play, but there's one main difference between combat and outlaw that you'll have to keep in mind. See, with combat, it was just like playing a video game, you know, hitting some buttons, killing some dudes, just playing WoW. But playing an outlaw? Playing an outlaw rogue is an art. So that's cool and everything, but why level as an outlaw then? Like, you're a pirate and that's great, but gameplay-wise, what makes it better than assassination or subtlety for leveling? Well, it's got a few things going for it. Outlaw doesn't need to ramp up damage through bleeds or poisons, doesn't need to stand behind something to deal maximum damage with backstab. It pretty much just starts the fight going strong and stays that way. And Outlaw is also one of the best specs for cleaving down a bunch of enemies at once because of Blade Flurry. You ever play Diablo? Outlaw is also just simple to play for a beginner. The skill floor is pretty low and anyone can start out dealing good damage. It's not a complex spec that requires the masters and juggling to play well, so, as an outlaw player, I probably should have studied something else in college. So before we set sail, let's cover a few basics. You're a rogue, so you take the role of close range damage dealer, no matter your specialization. You're a leather wearing class, and agility is your best stat. When you look for weapons, you want to use one-handed swords, maces, axes, or even fist weapons, but not daggers. Outlaw skills better with weapons that have high damage, rather than high speed. Your main resource is energy, which you'll use to do combos, your main source of damage. You start with 100 energy, and it regenerates quickly at 10 energy per second. You'll spend energy on moves called Builders, which build up your combo points. And then you'll end the combo and spend your combo points on powerful finishers. You can usually hold up to 5 combo points maximum, so when you're fighting, you'll rotate between building up and finishing your combo. And since you're a rogue, you're pretty hard to catch. While other classes mitigate, heal off, or just ignore damage, rogues are elusive, avoiding damage by fighting unfairly with stuns, evasion, stealth, and other tricky methods. They're like the nimble guy in the game, weak armor and health, but just frustrating to kill. Cheers, love! The, the cowboy's here! Let's go ahead and get started. After you make your character, you'll start off like all rogues do, dual wielding some daggers and not really having a specialization yet. I mean, technically you're an assassination rogue right now, but let's not worry about that. Instead, just practice the basics of being a rogue for these first 10 levels. So get started, pick up some quests, and start killing some dudes. When you're killing those dudes, your very first ability will be Sinister Strike, which deals some damage and builds a combo point. Then at level 3, you'll get your first finisher, Eviscerate, which just deals more damage the more combo points you spend. Once you reach level 5, you gain access to stealth. You can only enter stealth from out of combat, and you'll sneak around, undetectable to enemies, usually. Just try not to walk in front of a bad guy when you're in stealth, and avoid anything with this true sight icon. That guy can see you. The best thing about stealth is that from this point on, you get to pick all of your fights. To start those fights, you can use a special stealth-only move, called an opener, to immediately get the jump on someone. Your first opener is Cheap Shot, and it stuns your target for 4 seconds and grants 2 combo points. This is what a rogue does when you get to the very basics of the class. Rogues sneak around, choose their fights, and in battle they fight with combos. Later on, as you keep playing and leveling, you'll gain more tools that you can add to your play. Keep on leveling up, and at level 10, you can make the best choice you'll ever make in World of Warcraft. The choice to quit the game to switch to an outlaw rogue. So, you went to your specialization tab and switched to outlaw, right? Nice. Let's open up that spell book and see what kind of abilities you'll get. Alright, we got a... Uh, oh. oh. Oh geez, that's a lot. Um, Alright, well, let's start organizing these. Everything can be sorted into a category. Either being ability your primary use for dealing damage, playing defensively, applying crowd control, or just miscellaneous ability. 
Your damaging abilities are all about the fundamentals, and if you can get these down, you'll be a good outlaw. So to build combo points, you'll use Saber Slash, which generates one combo point, but sometimes you'll use Pistol Shot. Saber Slash has the chance to strike twice to deal more damage and build another combo point, and when that happens, your next Pistol Shot costs no energy, making it a great way to add an extra combo point and some free damage. Optionally, you can start a fight with one of your openers. It's not completely necessary for Outlaw, it's still good to do for some extra damage or to start fights with a stun, but don't feel like you gotta start every fight with Cheap Shot or Ambush. Sometimes you can just run up and shoot someone. You'd be surprised how effective that is. Ah! Did someone shoot me? Who did that? You wanna fight? And you've got two powerful abilities that can really make you stronger in certain situations. Adrenaline Rush is your big cooldown move. You can use it once every three minutes or so, but you'll attack faster and regenerate energy twice as fast for several seconds. Great for fighting a tough enemy when you need a boost. And then there's Blade Flurry, which is a toggled ability, and when it's toggled on, you cleave everything around your main target for a good chunk of the damage. Great when you gotta fight more than one guy at once. Once you've built up enough combo points, your two main finishers will be Roll the Bones and Run Through. Run Through is just like Eviscerate from before, where it's just straight damage. Roll the Bones, though, is pretty complicated, but it's also pretty fun. It doesn't deal any direct damage, but instead it'll give you a powerful effect for a little bit. The more combo points you spend, the longer the effect will last. And did you know? Roll the Bones is a slang term that refers to rolling dice. In ancient times, before plastic was invented, dice were typically made from animal bones, usually the ankle bones, which the Greeks called astragali because of how they were shaped or something. And rolling dice wasn't always about gambling or playing games. Some of the first people to use dice in ancient times were shamans and priests, rolling the dice and interpreting the results as signs from the gods. And if you play Outlaw for long enough, you too will probably start trying to find a god to pray to. Alright, so here's the deal. Roll of Bones has six different possible buffs it can give, and you either get one, two, three, or all six of those buffs at a time, decided by some dice rolls. When you cast Roll of Bones, you roll six dice, and the icon that shows face up the most often corresponds to the power up you'll get. In the event of a tie, you get all the buffs that tied. Because you're rolling six dice, it's actually pretty easy to calculate the chance of a tie occurring, hence the chance of getting multiple Roll of Bones power ups at once. It's a lot to learn, especially since each buff will change how you play by just a little bit, but you don't need to know all the details while you're still leveling up. And this is really something best learned by playing and getting familiar with it. Like I could easily talk about Roll of Bones for a solid 10 minutes, explain what all six buffs do, and what you should do when you get a certain combination, or what to look for when you roll the dice, but you'll learn how to use it if you just play around with it while you level up. Check out what the buffs do if you get a chance, and after a while it'll all just click. Just try to keep the effect of Roll the Bones going when you're fighting. It's a great way to make yourself stronger in combat. Fighting without Roll the Bones just isn't as effective. It's kind of like trying to sail a boat made of rocks. It's a hardship. Whoops. Okay, I forgot to list this category earlier, but let me explain. All our rogues don't have game-changing passive abilities. Your play style is just swing weapons, build combo points, and use finishers. Your passives are all boring bonuses that make you better at doing that. Ruthlessness helps you build more combo points, combat potency keeps your energy up, and your mastery... My gosh. ...just lets you swing your weapon more. That's it. It's basic, but it works. See, none of these change your play style, they just enhance what you do without changing what you do. The only interesting one is Fleet Footed, which passively reduces fall damage and increases your movement speed. And see, like, that's cool. Going faster helps you to catch enemies that run, and taking less fall damage makes cliffs and elevators less scary. So that falls that would heavily damage another class are just small little bumps to you. This passive also helps with dating, because you'll take reduced damage when you fall for someone. So damage is great and everything, but there's so much more to rogues than stabbing. Rogues are dirty, and rather than having the target able to fight back, you know, fairly, a rogue would prefer to throw dirt in their victim's eye and kick them while they're down. To do that, you've got four kinds of crowd control at your disposal. Stuns will lock your opponent in place for the duration and prevent them from taking any actions. Incapacitation effects do the same thing, but if the victim takes damage, the effect wears off immediately. And slow is just slow. You've already got one stun by the time you're an outlaw with Cheap Shot, and you'll get another stun at level 20 as a finisher. It's between the eyes and is stunned for one second per combo point spent. It also deals moderate damage, but it has a crazy 400% crit multiplier once it hits rank 2. Try it out if you're feeling like you can get a lucky crit. Whoa! Your three incapacitations are Sap, Blind, and Gouge, and keep in mind that incapacitations all break if the victim takes damage. Sap can only be used in stealth before a fight starts, while blind is a good just-in-case button that can be used on anyone at any time to take them out of the fight. And both last for a minute. 
gouges a miniature blind that lasts only 4 seconds, but also builds a combo point and has a much shorter cooldown. Look! Hey! Uh... Sorry, I need you to pay attention for this one. This is your most important form of control. It's your kick. If an enemy is casting like this, you can kick them and make them stop. And they'll be so shocked, they won't be able to use any spells from the same school of magic for a few seconds. It's super important. Look, you just gotta kick everyone at any time you see them casting. Just go ahead and kick them. Just kick them right in the face. Sometimes, a fight just goes badly. You might pull too many dudes. An enemy might jump out and surprise you. And on top of that, your cat just walked all over your keyboard, Sally. Where other classes would probably die, you're a rogue. And rogues have a pretty big defensive toolbox, plus all of their CC. Rogues can usually dictate a fight, but if they've got to play defensively, they're still pretty elusive, and they don't get pinned down easily if a fight doesn't go their way. Your first offensive ability is Crimson Vial at level 16, and it's just a healing potion you can use every 30 seconds to regenerate a good percentage of health, but you regenerate it, and it'll take a few seconds to work. You won't automatically get a burst of health like this is Skyrim or something. Just keep chugging it if you ever have some health missing. Then at level 26, you can stand and fight if you get overwhelmed by using Repost. You'll parry all attacks for 10 seconds, but there's a few catches to that. Besides having a 2 minute cooldown, you can only parry attacks coming at you from the front, and you can't parry spells. At level 32, you get Sprint, and it's just that. You run really fast for like 8 seconds. That's it. You just... you just sprint. Woo. At 44, you get Faint, and it's really, really good in dungeons. See, it reduces all area of effect damage you take for a few seconds, and it's got no cooldown and just a small little energy cost, so you can almost always have this available. But when you're leveling, it's mostly going to be single target attacks hitting you, so it's not really useful just yet. Just don't forget that you have this. But if a fight goes really bad, you can just leave it by vanishing. You can disappear into stealth even when you're in combat once every two minutes. You'll even clear all roots and snares on you when you do this. If you know you won't live through a fight, you can just leave and fight something else. This is probably one of the best forms of escape in the game, but it's got a few quirks with it. If you're the only person fighting an enemy, when you vanish, you're going to cause that enemy to reset. Its health will go back up, and all the damage you did will just be erased. But if the enemy was tough enough that it caused you to vanish in the first place, you might just want to turn around and fight something else. And finally, the last basic ability you'll get, Cloak of Shadows. It makes you immune to magical effects and magical damage for 5 seconds, and you can use it every minute and a half, so mages and magic users aren't really that scary when you can just ignore them. Like I said, it's the last basic ability you'll get, and it comes all the way at level 80. After you've killed the Lich King and saved the world... twice? Three times, I think? Some of your abilities don't really fit into any other category. Some are there just to provide that, you know, thief and scoundrel flavor. Things like being able to sneak up to someone and pick their pockets, or being able to pick locks to doors, treasure chests, and lock boxes, or letting your friends pretend they're rogues for 20 seconds. You can also distract enemies so it's easier to sneak around. Try this in PvP to mess with someone's camera. <laughs> and when you're in a party, try Tricks of the Trade, a little ability to redirect all threat you generate for a few seconds. It's only useful in dungeons since you need a party member to take the threat, and you'll always want to use this on your tank. Or your holy paladin friend. Being a pirate, you have a couple of your own special tricks. You can bribe someone to fight for you for a few minutes, which is fun, and you'd be surprised who you can trick with your fool's gold. But there's a hidden ability too, which doesn't show up in your spellbook. You'll have to go to your minimap to see this, but in your tracking menu right here, you'll see that you have the ability now to track treasure chests. And who doesn't like treasure chests? So that's all your basic abilities, but every outlaw gets to do all that. How about you pick your abilities now? That's what your talents are for. Every 15 or so levels, you get to choose from 3 talents in a tier, and just pick the one you like the best. Generally, they all have about the same power level, but some talents fit some situations better than others, so let's figure out what's good for leveling up. Your first choice at level 15 is all about increasing your damage and your combo point generation. I personally like Quick Draw the best because I like powering up my free pistol shots, but Swordmaster is good for leveling too. Ghostly Strike is really only good if you're fighting a boss. Otherwise, the enemy is just gonna die too quickly for this to be useful. At level 30, pick Grappling Hook, because everything else is awful. At level 45 though, you can uh, enhance your resource management, either your energy or your chemical points, and all of these are pretty good. For questing and leveling, I like to pick up Vigor, 
uh, for the extra 50 energy and energy regen, so I can always start fights with high energy. But the other two talents are good too, so go ahead, try them out, pick your favorite. Level 60 is a great tier, because it helps you live longer. And you probably want to pick up Iron Stomach to make your Crimson Vial heal for a higher amount. It'll also increase the healing of any health stones from your Warlock friends, and the healing of any healing potions you may have bought, made, or pickpocketed. Hmm. The other two talents are okay. If I feel like I don't need the Iron Stomach healing, I usually go with Cheat Death. <sighs> Level 75 though is a mess. Parlay is probably one of the worst abilities in the game, and Dirty Tricks removes the energy cost of four CC abilities, but only three of them have an energy cost in the first place? What? Why? Alright, well, you probably either want Dirty Tricks just at free gouges for free combo points, or Prey on the Weak when you're with the group, so your cheap shot helps with the overall group damage. Level 90 is a great tier, though, much better than 75. All three of these are good choices, but Alacrity takes a little to build up, so I skip it for leveling. Cannonball Barrage and Killing Spree are both strong, and you can pick either one. I personally like Cannonball Barrage, so that once a minute I can gather a bunch of enemies, drop a barrage of cannonballs, and cleave down a big group at once for a bunch of experience. And finally, at level 100, your choice will give you a new angle and drastically alter how you play. So this one's going to be the, one of the toughest decisions you have to make as a rip. Mark for death. This talent is amazing for leveling. See, it's got a minute long cooldown, and you mark the target to instantly gain maximum combo points. And when the target dies, the cooldown's refreshed. You can do some crazy stuff with this, like mark a target about to die, use a finisher, have it die, mark another target, and just repeat. You go through monsters just so fast with this, I can't think of another talent this good for leveling. It's just so good, and you know where to go to level up, right? Well, if not... So you've got the basics down, you know what your abilities do, and maybe you're even planning out what talents you want to pick up. So you're ready to head out into the world and start exploring and leveling up. If this is your first time through, or if you're just looking for some leveling tips, got you covered. So, leveling up in WoW is all about doing quests, and questing is pretty simple. You'll pretty much just go from town to town, or quest hub to quest hub, and you just keep questing and leveling up. NPCs will keep pointing you in the right direction and leading you to further quest hubs and towns, and if you ever get lost, you can bring up your map to check what zone you should quest in based on your level. Or you can even check the adventure journal for some suggestions on what to do next. You might want to try running some dungeons as you level up too. So your job is pretty much to just follow around the tank and kill the mobs that they attack. The tank will keep their attention and you'll go for the kill. The healer will just stand there and look pretty. And while you're leveling up, you'll start collecting new gear too. And that's one of the best things about WoW, getting new gear and making your character stronger. So when you get a new piece of gear, maybe from a quest or from one of those dungeons, how do you know if it's an upgrade? Well, you can compare the gear in your bag to the gear you're currently wearing by holding shift over the item in your bag, and a rule of thumb to see if it's an upgrade or not is to check the item levels. The higher item level of the gear, the better it is. However, keep in mind that you're a rogue and you really just want agility on your gear. You don't do well with strength, and you don't do well with intellect. You're not a wizard. If you want some extra cash while you're leveling up too, maybe to buy some bags to increase your inventory space, I would recommend that you pick up professions. The two I would recommend for leveling are mining and herbalism. It's great that you can pick flowers and rocks and sell them on the auction house for cash, but it's even better that these two professions are the only ones that grant you experience. You can mine a rock or pick a flower, and you'll still get some XP from that. One very dedicated player even went all the way to level 110 without leaving his starting zone by using just mining and herbalism. So yeah, the extra experience is pretty good. And finally, dying. It happens. It's just part of leveling up and learning the game. You'll become a spirit, and to resurrect, you just spirit run back to your corpse. It'll be exactly where you left it, when you... You also have the option to talk to the spirit healer at the graveyard to resurrect there, but don't. You'll get resurrection sickness, and you won't be able to fight anything for a while. Avoid this, if at all possible. Just run back to your corpse and resurrect there. And don't worry about dying. It happens. And hey, dying's not even that bad. In fact, I constantly feel like dying. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, that ended on a dark note. Um, but hey, I'm glad you watched it. Seriously, this video took a long time to make, and a lot of work, and maybe one or two complete rewrites. This was originally just going to be a, you know, short little video for my girlfriend. 
because she was getting into WoW and she was playing in Outlaw Rogue and I thought I'd help her out. And then as I was writing, I realized there's a lot of stuff to talk about and it turned into a 19 minute video. So if you watched it all, just thank you. Appreciate you. You're the best. But while I'm wrapping everything up, there's a few things I didn't cover in the main video since I wanted to make this guide pretty beginner and new player friendly. But for the more advanced players, uh, two things. For one, heirlooms. If you have access to them, pick up the rogue set and the one-handed agility swords. You know, the usual stuff, but most importantly, grab a necklace. You can enchant it with Mark of the Hidden Seder, a legion enchant, to sometimes blast mobs with a ton of fire damage. You'll just one-shot things while you're leveling, it's stupid. Second, Roll the Bones is probably going to be changed around in an upcoming patch, but not drastically, at least for leveling. You don't really need to worry about the change unless you're doing group content and you're actually paying attention to how you're using the Roll of Bones effects and buffs and all that. When you're leveling, keep the buff active when you're fighting and you're good. I might make a more in-depth guide for max level players later on where I'll actually talk about Roll of Bones for 10 minutes. And third, uh, look, this is the first video on the channel. I don't really have like a set format or style or I don't even really know what I want to do with this channel. So let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, maybe, you know, stuff like that. Was the pacing okay? Did you like the drawings, the footage, explanations? Did you maybe think the opening was a really dumb cringe fest? Let me know in the comments what you thought and subscribe to see what comes out next. If you want to keep updated on what I'm doing, the best place to find me is on Twitter. And if you want to help out even a little bit, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. These videos are a lot of work and everything, but they're pretty fun to do. Some of the perks of helping me out include sneak peeks of potential videos projects, getting to see some videos early, getting your own videos, or even a custom drawing every month. But again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.